look at the chat and I can say things in the chat. Oh, what I'm hoping to do today is what? Is make a a mini golf clone. My friend Thomas Boyt made, which is apparently a clone of something called Desert Golf, which I'm not familiar with, but apparently it looks kind of like, well, here's the last time I tried to clone it. It looks kind of like this. Um, not this, golf. Yeah, it looks kind of like this thing here. The gist was like side view, you know, you, you shoot a ball, it goes places, sometimes it gets in, do it again. That's pretty neat. But then there, and actually this is real, you know, this is a project we've worked a long time on. Golf was not the point. We're just looking at golf. He did something like many golf. This thing, and the gist is it's like that other golf, except it's obviously better. And it, uh, has multiple people. Other people could show up here. I think it's just all the same one. So if other people were to show up here, they would show up. Uh, this is neat stuff. Um, I don't know what frameworks. I think he did a lot of stuff from scratch. Um, but what I'm hoping to do today is get something roughly like this and then use Convex, a company I work for, big sponsored content advertisement. Um, use this tool to synchronize state so we can have multiple play people playing golf at the same time. Uh, there aren't other people here, but if there are other people here, you'd see in my friend Tom's th Thomas's thing, oh, it's gonna work pretty similarly. Wow, they make you go back to the beginning when you get off. Hmm. So when I made this, this is like seven years ago now, uh, the part I was excited about was that you could rewind time. So you can come down here and say, what if all the shots were just less powerful and make this 0 0.04 and it will rewind time and make a less powerful shot or more powerful. Let's do it 0.7. Oh yeah. Hole in one. Uh, try to get that to work. Oh, I just did it right away. Oh, didn't work. I can come back here and say, make it slightly more powerful. Oh, slightly less powerful. Not quite enough. Yeah, so that's neat. We're not doing time travel today. We are just gonna try to get something working with, um, try to make multiplayer, uh, what do we call it? Yeah, a multiplayer little golf game. And the first thing I'm most worried about is being able to hook up some physics so that you can throw stuff. So I've cheated and I've done a little bit of it ahead of time. If we can hook up some physics, so you can make a ball move around the standard, right? Like shoot it, maybe apply a little bit of drag so that it looks kind of cool and then definitely apply some gravity so it falls back down. Um, and then the convex part is going to be, let's take each of those shots and sync them with everybody else. And anybody playing this game, you know, there's some way to say, I am, I don't know what you call it in golf, a hit, a stroke. Um, I, I am kapowing the ball and it's moving. And uh, every time that happens, you're going to send that action out to everybody else. And there'll be some shared global state that is syncing this. And I think when Thomas Boyd this, he wrote some good blog posts about it at the time, I think. Thomas Boyd, uh, many golf, um, talks about the WebSocket server stuff. And I've done some of this stuff too before. Um, oh, wow. Thomas Boyd to, yeah. So so we could read about this some. He, he did some stuff with, uh, you know, his own WebSocket server to hook all this stuff up. Um, I am here to promote this cool, well, a, I'm here to just like program. Let's 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 chat and vibe and all that. Um, I've seen people stream for a long time. I've started to watch a fair bit of YouTube. I'm interested in trying to do this. But the immediate motivation why I'm doing this now instead of years ago uh, is I want to play with Convex and I work at Convex again, sponsored, and I want to use that to sync the state because Convex really does make this state synchronization problem a lot easier. It makes it much easier to just build something and say, oh, I wish 
someone else's copy of this also had my data in it. So the, the quintessential thing is a chat app, but we're trying to break out of that a little bit with our little golf thing. Okay, so we don't need this, don't need this. This is just an ad. This is, we might need this for reference. The, I did, I think, do a nice job um, in this code. You can see it's, you know, it's a fair amount of code, but it's not too bad. And that is doing this random terrain generation stuff and there's some bouncing stuff. And like looking at this code gave me confidence this is hopefully something we can do. And if I don't know how to do something, I can just come back here and look at how I did it in this weird Lispy language, uh, like whatever, seven years ago. Um, Okay, back to outline. Let's. So I want to hook up some physics. I want to push each. I call it publish. Let's publish each um, event, each each stroke, each golf stroke, and that's probably as far as we'll get. But I, I, I do want to like show everyone's golf strokes. If someone wants to drop in chat what this is uh what what it's called in golf when you when you make the ball go a hit um uh, on a golfer i'm gonna call it a stroke okay and i cheated a little bit um i hooked up what i've got here so far here i should publish these people could look if they want i'll wait um it's called ball shoot and up here i have some html that says just have a ball have its position be state.x and it's uh, other you know, state dot x and y are its position. I have this array of strokes, and this is the thing I'm hoping to globally synchronize. And it says at right now there was a ball at ten ten, and it was moving at three in the x direction and five in the y direction. At now plus three thousand milliseconds, at plus three seconds, and this is now when I load the page. So let's let's load the page and see this work. Um, ooh, the ball moved. Look at that. And then a little bit later, the ball moved like that. And then a little bit later, seven seconds after we load, it's going to move like that. So I'm hoping we can have these globally synced clocks. So everybody's machine's going to, you know, we'll just we'll just hope that all everyone's clocks are in sync. And you'll send in events like this that says, at this time, there was a ball here and it moved in this way. And we have the you know the basics of what we need to render that. So, you know, I, I just updated those times here, and this is this kind of this animation is showing each one of these. At the moment, it's just one ball. We'll have to change it to make it multi balls. Um, we'll maybe have some IDs. Maybe you get a color. Who knows? I think that'll come out when we're doing the convex stuff. Um, is there anything else interesting here? There exists code here to render this into that, and that's all it is. Because um, I will publish it in case people are interested. Uh, sure, automatic, public, um, balancing deep ball shoot, great. People want you can you can navigate to here, but I'll probably forget to publish this very much. It's only when I go to that publish thing that it'll be updated. Hmm. So I think we'll get started. Uh, but I'm really excited about it, like distractions. So if, if if anyone's in chat saying saying things like how does this work or hello or my hot chocolate tastes good. Um, it, that'd be fun. Otherwise, we, let's go hook up some physics. We've basically got that. If I were to add another one of these, let's have something happen at four seconds. I don't think these have to be in order. Uh, I think they do have to be in order the way I wrote the code. So let's make them not in order and then sort them afterwards. Oh, sort. Uh, oh, we'd have to write a compare. Let's not do that. Let's just keep them in order. Um, at four seconds, let's put a ball at uh, 50, 50 that is moving a little bit in the x direction and not at all in the y. So we should just watch it fall. Do this. That's the first one. This is the three second one that's really fast to the side. That was this one here. Let's give it, move it higher up. 250, smaller x. We great. 
So with this basic front end stuff set, um, I wish I could just, I would like to be getting these from some global uh, sync of, some globally synced state. So let's do that. We need to make a convex project. Um, what do we call it? Ball shoot. Hmm, and here's where I have to set up our uh, JavaScript project. And I don't need the front end part, um, but it's kind of fun to use TypeScript. And that's a little, it's not too bad. Let's just set it up ourselves. It's a npm i dash y. Nope, that's not even how it works. npm init dash y. And now we've got one of these. And then we can npm install TypeScript and uh, what else do we need? PM install convex. I don't know what this means, but that's something to worry about during work hours. Open ID client. Actually, I'm kind of. I wonder about this. Node module. What's in here? What's this readme say? Good. It's a convex. It's a global state management for platform for web developers. That's great. Um, oh, thank you. Golf seems good. Or, or stroke. Stroke seems good. Thank you. Um, great. That's that solves our terminology issue here. Um, note. Stroke is a perfectly good thing to call a hit in golf. Great. Good to know. Um, What's we do? So now we're doing this convex stuff. I happen to know it's npx convex. Uh, I think I do a login. Uh, and then I hopefully move. Oh, actually, it doesn't matter. There's nothing you can do with this information. So it's safe. Great. But I had to think about the security model. Does you seeing that matter? I think it doesn't. Uh, then I think I do a convex init. Cool. And now there's a little folder in here where I get to write functions. And what they look like, good thing there's an example in the, uh, in the readme here. And, uh, let's, let's start with a query that will just return all the, the current strokes. Get. Strokes. I'll just put everything in one. How about golf dot ts? Looks like these are supposed to look like this. And then maybe we'll have one of these. Anything else? I have to do some imports. Call this um, get strokes. Um, <laughs> strokes gonna bother me a bit, but I'll we'll, we'll go for it. Um, publish stroke. OK, for now, all this is going to do is return some objects. I'm not really using the database aspect of convex yet. Um, let's just return this hard-coded data. I'll, I'll want to get some prettier here. Why are we sad about this? Because we return up there. Great. I have some prettier. Yeah, you. Great. 
So the way convex works is we write code in our terminal. We push it. These are just just like like um, what do we call them? Serverless functions. It's code that runs somewhere else, and that's all that we're really using about it right now. So I think I say npx convex push tells me some stuff about how if I were using the database, maybe I'd want a schema. I'm not. I don't. Dashboard. Will that do this? Great. I think I'm looking at this thing here. Great. Here are my golf functions. Uh, Publish stroke doesn't do anything interesting yet. And now I need a client. And I've written an observable notebook about this before. Observable um, convex somewhere other. Cool. Okay, I'm supposed to have a, right, I've got one of these. What happens next? We need an origin. So now I'm gonna copy this from somewhere. That lives in this. So if, if we look around at this directory, I have a few things going on. Um, Convex.json is the one I'm interested in. Uh, guiltless dog, wonderful. <laughs> a guiltless dog. Um, probably need this one, actually. Great. And now we make a client. I'll call it convex equals a, sure. Convex, what do we use here? The React or the, yeah, sure, React's fine. And these are positional arguments, yep. One positional argument. Cool, and this is the thing that I should be able to say, gosh, what is the interface? I think it's something like, Okay, well, let's just play with the tab completion. What looks good? Clear, set off. A watch. We're going to get a watch. Yeah, watch the query. The query I'm interested in is called, what is it called? It's called get strokes. Mm, okay, that gives me a W. And then I think I'm supposed to do something with that. Uh, but I need my tab completion to find out what. Um, great. W dot on update. Every time that there I get an update on that object, I would like to uh, run this query. And that gives me, OK, time to look at some docs, because I can't remember this part. Or I could just look at the example I've got here. Um, and all this nice documentation I wrote months ago. Query generator, that sounds like I kind of want. Uh, yeah, that's what I want. I'm just going to use this. Great. And I can say a query generator of the convex client and the query that I'm trying to do, which is get strokes, should give me a value here. I don't have a value now. I think that's because I think if I reload, I might. No. So convex functions are triggered whenever, like I'll get a new update every time the data underlying database, the, da the database, I was like a read set that that query would trigger when one of those rows or one of those tables changes, that's when this would update or I think I'm supposed to get an initial query, at least. Um, but the way I've written this maybe doesn't work, because I'm, I say observe and wait for something. I think I can, all right, so I just have to look at this code. Watch this query. Um, this is an observable thing, this generator stuff. Every time we get an update, do this. But also, I would like to maybe get an initial one or something. Hmm. 
What about just the first time watch dot on update, but also could you please oops. Uh, oh shoot, no, this is returning and unsubscribe as well. So I don't really want to mess with it. Oh, that's okay. I think it's like un sub. And I can call watch one first time, or notify the very first time with. Uh, the watch dot no, but I don't have a, a handle on that query store, right? Convex dot cache. Nope. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead is use actual dynamic data because I don't know how to get static data to update here. Uh, undo. Looks defined to me. Query generator, query generator. Oh yeah, it, it's we don't have a value from this yet. That's our issue. So let's do that. Let's go back to convex. Let's go back to these functions and start using the database. Let's say db dot sure table. Um, first, we're gonna okay. We actually have to think out schemas here. This is great. Um, any questions about about these these things? Happy to uh, stop being stuck and actually talk confident, like I know what I'm doing. But if I'm making progress here, I have to uh, figure this out. So. In Convex, we have tables. We have database tables. We can write to them. That will trigger automatically subscriptions to come back from our queries. I'm going to say, what if we had a table called uh, I guess we're going we're gonna to call it strokes. And I'd like to insert. Is that a thing? Add. What do we have here? Take, first, index, order, filter, collect. None of these look good. So how about db dot, uh, that looks more like it, insert. Um, cool, insert into strokes. No arguments to start out with. What we're going to insert is always going to be one of these stroke objects. Sorry, it's just just prettier. Uh, cool. So each time we call public stroke, it's going to stick one of these in there, which should be a stroke is going to happen seven seconds in the future. And I've got to be careful because soon anybody will be able to call these. Um, and then in here, we're not re looking at something hard coded. We are going to say db.table, uh, the, the strokes thing, dot, what do we got? Um, collect, just give me everything, I think. Great. And then we can just return those all strokes. So I want a full, just every single thing in there. Just kind of bring those out. This could potentially make a lot of rows. Some of them will have the same value. Some will have different multiple values. They may not necessarily be in order. I'd like these sorted from the what oldest time to newest time. I'm just going to do that sort. I'll just see how we get them. I bet they'll be in order. We'll we'll find out. Mm. X like push or something. Cool. Now back here, we can do a convex dot uh, mutation. 
uh, called, what was it called? Called publish stroke. So I think every time I call publish, um, that should turn something. Starting to get curious about my WebSocket here. Uh, lots of all kinds of errors. Couldn't find getstrokes.js. Um, that's because it's not called getstrokes. So that was the problem the whole time. It was nothing to do with the, <laughs> the um, uh, interaction of it. It was that. The reason we push people to use TypeScript with these is because it's nice to, to get these right. This string is actually golf, maybe .js colon. I'm going to look at my convex dashboard to see what is it called. Well, it's hard to, OK. Golf colon get strokes. Thank you. That's what this is called. Great. Um, no, sorry, that's what this one should be called. And this one should be publish stroke. Cool. All right. I've got this thing. And every time I call this function, I should get another one. And it looks like I'm getting new timestamps, which is great. So if I hooked this up now, this might work. That console seems important. I'm going to leave that around. OK, so I'm looking at timestamps here. What do I think the current time is locally? I wonder if my timestamps are going to match. Hopefully they will. If I do a date.now, that is this. And if I do date.now minus um, Will this be a small number? Remote strokes, remote strokes, strokes. Uh, not a great sign. Oh, dot ts. Um, 42 seconds. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. That's about how long it took me to type a line of code. <laughs> uh, and then if I stick another one in, I do another publish. I have a fourth line. And I could now look at this one, and I'll get a number like, oh, because it's seven seconds in the future. Right. OK, I think we're ready to plug this in. Um, the state we're going to work with is now going to be um, curve running of strokes. I'm going to, this will be of remote strokes. And the idea now is that when I create a new one, let's move this down, both on screen at once. When I send a new one, Hopefully, I would see something happen here. Um, hard to tell. So it's time to start instrumenting this stuff. Uh, but I do have five things here. Uh, this one is more recent. State. So yeah, this is my loop that it was supposed to be building state based on those remote things. Uh, Hmm. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting those uh what do you call them? Like interview jitters from from like when you're when you're on a, co a phone screen and somebody far away is uh just sitting there waiting for you to make some connection and it's just it's some like tree transformation problem or it's, it's something where there's a simple insight they're waiting for you to get and you can feel them there with their stopwatch just waiting to, to to mark down it's like yep yep it took them 16 minutes to complete part a um, which is still on track for a four out of five um, which just makes me blank out but but this is not like that this is just fun um, I'm trying to figure out. Right, if these are making their way in there. So time for some console.logs. Uh, 
what's the stroke now of so this kind of thing is using that new data or no it's not uh, remote strokes this should find that current one and then this should get the Oh, okay, that was smart, because now everywhere I had hard-coded strokes, um, we get to plug it in, and I see that I was not actually using remote strokes for any of these. Um, okay, that's because the curve stroke... Came, no? That, okay, it's because I did another one of these um, Stokes strokes typos of strokes strokes cur stroke when we call that should be called on remote strokes but here I'm just calling it straight great uh, for long I'm going to want to be doing these in TypeScript all right so when I add so the flow here is I'm going to add a new one and then seven seconds later I should see something happen down here uh, that's about great there it is cool so we're now sharing state with convex. Um, this is now, since I published this, anybody could go to that thing and send one of those messages. Uh, I just happened again. Oh, that's because I re-executed something. Oh, because when I publish, the notebook re-executes. If I run this again, each time, let's put a comment. When you, seven seconds after clicking this, the, the ball, will fly. I just re-executed it, I think, because it did a format. So, okay, seven seconds is not real useful. Um, where did I write? So that seven is something that I wrote in here. And now we're doing this really naive sync stuff where a client says, here is an event that's happening at this specific time. It's using its client timestamp, which is not good. Well, it's not anymore because we're doing this publish. Uh, so we're using the convex trustworthy timestamp, which is good. We're adding seven seconds to that just in case, um, I don't know, I guess the clients, maybe if they're a little bit behind or something, but we don't need to add seven seconds. Let's add, uh, let's, now why would we add anything at all? Well, to take care of the latency where you do the stroke during that round trip, the ball should be in motion and it's just going to snap to that spot. Um, but I don't know, let's go for it. That's, that's, that sounds fine. So there's no delay now. Right when you click this button, it should transmit this message out. We're getting close to like, not really, but, but this is like a little more realistic netcode where you, when an action happens, it happens when the client says it happens and then other people find out about it later and you have to you know, jump ahead. Um, great, so let's push that instead. The X convex push. Let's see what that looks like. This is now going to be a test of our round trip latency. When I, I, I didn't need to publish because this is all reactive stuff. Um, all right, I didn't need to reload. Now, when I do a publish, there we go. It just flies now, cool. So this is the code that I'm hoping many people can be running. Many people pass a delay into the publish call. Yeah, that's reasonable. We could say, I don't think I want it. To, yeah, great, great point. Great. So, so we could make this configurable. The client could say, "I would like to ha do this thing, and I want to take it, have it take effect at a later time." We could absolutely do that, um, Trust. Uh, I'm imagining. I mean, it's a little silly, but I want to, I want to have this game experience where when you take an action, it happens almost immediately. I guess I do want a little delay because we can cheat. Like when we build the interface for for firing a shot, it's going to be something like. I don't know, did we see how, how did many golf do it? Um, it uses arrow keys, which I think is clever. And you hold down spacebar, right when you lift up spacebar, you do see it flying. And so that's the effect I want. And so I think I want to do it without delay, just, just so it really is like the moment. Oop, somebody else beat me, someone else is playing. Um, yeah, so it's a good point that we could pass a delay, but I don't want to pass a delay. I just want it, this to happen right away, and it's going to be a test of our, our round trip latency. Um, okay, so to see, are there other pieces 
we should do here. I mean, this is this is just make the ball fly. So our rendering layer is a little limited here in that it can only render one ball at a time. And the whole point here is I'd like to have everybody's balls flying around all over the place. And the, right, of course, eventually, right, we want that little background stuff, things like this, where there's some mountains and they and they change and there's bouncing. Um, right now we have none of that. But the part I'm excited about is the multiplayer part. So hmm, I think I need to change the renderer to deal with uh, multiple simultaneous um, like in-flight balls. And I could say, please render every single row in this database. All right, we have data now. We could say, oh, there's a lot of things. Um, I think I'm going to... Hmm, this is interesting. So we're receiving all of these on the client, and then the client is looking at the time. Um, yes, exactly, right. I'm hoping to pass the X, Y, and the angle. Yeah, so right. So we'll have an interface for it. We'll pass in what that angle is. That's going to make it shoot off at that angle. And you know, we could have it just pass. So when I was thinking about this before, I was thinking the client could just do all the math. Um, and for a good experience, the client should be able to do at least some of the math. But for a safe, protected experience, the server should be doing the, like, should really be doing the math. Um, right now, so a user should be able to, like, security-wise, they should be able to pass whatever angle they want and whatever power they want to the server. And then the server will distribute those out. And that way, if you want to cheat, it's only your own rendered experience that that, I mean, there are lots of ways you could cheat, but if you, you know, you'll only be able to put in real data that gets interpreted, you will not be able to publish a, you know, publish a wacky flight for your ball that goes around in a loop-de-loop. -loop. You know, everywhere it will have to um, fall. Okay, let, you know, let's, let's stand test. Let's 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 start publishing real. Before we do the multiplayer thing, let's start publishing. Um, like, make an interface so you can publish an angle and an X, Y, or whatever. Yeah, that sounds great. Is this by the outline? Um, publish each stroke. We're already doing that, but let's make this publish each, like publish interesting strokes. Hmm. Okay, so we need an interface for this. I was just saying I like Thomas's where you use arrow keys, but I kind of like the mouse. Um, let's start by all you get to do is pass. Yeah, what what's the angle? Never heard of convex. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's it's um, again sponsored content. I work there, but here I'm approaching this as you know a hobbyist where I'm just my goal is to sync this state, right? I'm trying to um, just the simplest way to get state between these different clients, but still have protected server code that runs in a you know a context we can't clients can't mess with. Uh, all right, what was the plan? Let's make a publish. Uh, let's make our own publish that looks like um, something like send send that ball. And should it be angles? What do people? If people have to type these manually, I have I worry people have trouble reasoning about angles. Um, it's not too bad. Let's say you can only do things that are up. You can, so it's a number between negative 90 and 90. Uh, yeah, so it'll be angle. Uh, if angle degrees, if angle in degrees is less than or equal to uh, negative 90 or angle in degrees. And it's interesting, I'm writing front end code that's doing error checking here. There's no security in that, it's just, just for convenience so that people can try to figure out how to use this. Or it's greater than 90, then throw you a nice little error here about, uh, hey, it's in degrees. Uh, I'm thinking positive, like 90 is straight to the right, zero is straight to the left. So I guess I'm thinking about a, you know, not a not a math unit circle, but a like game unit circle where it's rotated 90 degrees. Hey, it's in degrees. Um, 
equals is fine. Um, 90 means straight left, zero means straight up. Now I have to write some, or use a trig function such that this works. So let's write a little, little exercise of this. Send that, well, um, what do I want? Really the thing, well, well, well yeah. I, I wanna figure out how to turn a number like 45 into a unit vector. And that's the kind of thing you could look up, but it's, it's probably more fun to just try it. What does sine give me? Sine of 90 is of 90 and 90 is gonna give me uh, a number and a negative number. Oh, you're supposed to be in radians, uh, 90. Oof, help me out. Divided by 360 over, uh, shoot anybody uh okay so to convert from radians it's it's uh pi over 180 or something um what uh divided what is it times math dot pi over 180 i bet that'll do roughly the right thing And that gives me, okay, so that gives me a high number in sine will be my y, because nine, nope, 90 was supposed to be straight, so I have to rotate this. Uh, goes to So if I convert a 90, I'm hoping that that will be a straight ahead. So only X dimension. This is only Y dimension right now. So let's change these so that we dig, dig, please add. So I'm rotating, my unit circle would normally be this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the numbers. I want this, what would normally be a zero to be a 90. I want what would normally be a, oh my, it's, I've flipped it too. Uh, thank you. Okay, Fress has got this. Two pi angle over 360. Let's, let's just, let's stick with that. Two pi, um, wait, two pi times angle. Is that the same as, whatever. I'll, I'll follow the formula. Um, two Yeah, I'll say it was similar, but that's fine. Um, degrees times this. Okay, and I want, great. So again, this will give me something. How about, what if I try zero? That's the thing, okay. And then the other one I care about con is convert of negative 90. Um, and okay, so the first one is my X, the next one's my Y, this looks great. Uh, this is actually what I wanted, so, um, right, cause sine's Y, cosine's X, I guess. Okay, I've just flipped it, right? Well, no, no, that's right. One is all the way to the right. Okay, anyway, we we did it. I'm not gonna think about it more. Um, it's the convert of, uh, The angle in degrees, dx equals the convert of that times, I don't think we need to multiply it, it's, that's fine. Uh, we need a magnitude. How how hard do you wanna hit? How hard? What well, you wrote is the same. Okay, thanks, trust. <laughs> I'm just, uh, angle in degrees and how hard, could we call it impact or um, multiple? gonna say gosh this really needs to be if uh, how hard is less than zero or how hard is greater than 20 or something um, then it's not allowed um,
times how hard and const dy. Oh, the point was to get the okay, const dx dy equals convert times how hard. Let's return dx dy. See what that looks like. Of I want to send it at a 45 degree angle, which should be equal magnitude for both at 10. That gives me a convert is not iterable uh, because why? Because this does return something. Um, mightiness, yeah, that was, that was a better, better word for how hard. I might, let's just change that real quick. I'm sure observable has some cool tool for a rename. It just seems like the kind of thing you'd be able to do. Uh, Expo settings. Uh, let's bring up our question mark. Friendly, friendly question mark. Help me out. Um, keyboard shortcuts. Inserting, editing text. Uh, find and replace. Here it is. Uh, search contents of editors and replace. Yep, that's what I want to do. Open the find pane. Command Shift F. Uh, great. Command Shift F. Let's find a how hard and replace with mightiness. And then how do I how do I make it take? I assume, yep, replace all. Great. Command. All right, this is this is good UI. I like this. Um, great, it's mightiness now. Back here. Um, I was still stuck on why we can't. I said const dx dy equals the convert of this stuff. Oh, because I tried to multiply it by mightiness, maybe. Convert. I should be multiplying each one, I guess. We should be doing dx times equals. Is that a thing in JavaScript? Mightiness. dy times equals mightiness. Let's see if that works. Assignment to a constant, because let's make it not a constant. OK. Seven, seven, great, that sounds reasonable. Um, our coordinate system needs to be that, but. All right, and now instead of printing something, what this is gonna do is call publish with, uh, I guess it's gonna be with dx and dy. Uh, hmm. No, it's gonna be with, uh, this is the code that I'm going to stick on the server. It's just going to be publish uh, with angle in degrees and might. Oh. <laughs> Mightiness isn't a word. It's might. How mighty are you? What's what's your might? Oh, I've been fooled. OK. Mightiness is not bad. It's just, it's. I guess it's clearer. It's more clearly a noun. We do do that in programming a lot, right? There's something that could ambiguously be a noun or a verb. Um, Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm looking for detractions. Thanks, Suhav. Um, I am... Great. It's great you saw stuff a long time ago. I have do a lot more JavaScript now. And the tool I'm using right now... Uh, that's all right. I, I'm, I'm looking for distractions, so I'm taking it. Uh, the tool I'm using right now is called Observable. This is a company I worked at for a while. This is a really neat tool that does reactivity right. Um, and now I work at a cool company that's trying to do reactivity right on the server. And so I'm tying these things together with this little example. Um, OK, angle. And right now, we are publishing. Now I'm just talking to myself to try to remember what we're doing. Right now, we are going to send to the server the information that we're trying to uh, make a golf ball move. Uh, you don't know where it's moving from, but it is moving from that spot to somewhere at some angle and with some might. But I'm going to keep calling it mightiness, because that is clearly a noun. Uh, in case anyone wants, we'll republish. And I just decided that the syntax of this is going to be um, publish angle and degrees mightiness. Now, in JavaScript, you can call functions with extra arguments. So I bet I have no errors right now. I um, mean, these errors do with reloading. Um, but this convex function, well, let's go look. Does it know what it's been called with? Uh, functions golf. Do I have a logs? That sounds good. Uh, looks like I've been calling these functions. I don't know what arguments I've been calling them with. I don't know how to drill down and get that. Um, 
But that might be because, well, yeah, I'm not sure how this works. Uh, but it makes sense that it wouldn't work yet because all that publish does right now, if we read the code here, convex golf is it, if, it, if there are argue arguments, it just ignores them because they should be here. So let's have this take, uh, what was it? Angle and mightiness. Uh, I'm going to do similar code to what I was doing on the server before. Mm. And that was this stuff. So let's get this code into to here. I need a convert function. If I'm really gonna be streaming, oops. If I'm really gonna stream, I need to switch to VS Code. So that's that's the plan to, to do at some point. Um, free interface. Yeah, this is this is a fancy interface. Um, this is just a silly interface because I can't be bothered to learn VS Code, but I want to learn it. Uh, that's a number. Now we're in TypeScript. Convert um, angle in degrees. In degrees. Just be very clear. Uh, let's. To get an x and y let's multiply it by mightiness and then let's who okay so where's the ball should start for now it's still going to start now eventually right you're going to send in a stroke and your ball will start from wherever it was because we'll have persistent state for that but right now it's always going to start at 30 30 maybe 50 50 and then the dx and dy are going to come from the thing you sent in uh, so once we push this that should be enough to test this push I'm curious if we see arguments or not here. Um, we will see new entries here. I'm gonna, so a thing we can, yeah, let's, let's, let's just do it. A thing we can do, oh, they want me to be careful. Um, I can't even copy. I just wanna delete it. I'm gonna cheat, copy it from there. So a fun thing about these tables is they're schemaless. They, you can just stick whatever you want in them and do your like checking what the types of things are in your functions, ideally. Um, now that I've pushed, I should be able to, in here, I guess I've got to do window management now, because I want to see this. Let's take a look at that thing, and then let's, oops, let's look at this, and let's do a, oh dear, increment count, oh, this is, this is not even the right thing. Um, okay. Here, I should be able to do, okay, we're calling publish with no arguments, that's no good. Uh, we're still doing the math here, I guess, just so I can like console, I don't know, we really don't need to do the math here. Okay. Okay, did I just, I just sent something. I didn't know, didn't realize I was, but. Um, mm, okay, I've got data in here. Do my logs say what I sent in? I don't think so, but. Yeah, I've got my data, and it says the DX was a little more space. The, oh no, I was right. Okay, the D, D, I wish I could, see. okay, they were resizable, right, great. Uh, I think if I reload, it'll just give me a good resize. Yes, sweet. Seven, seven, um, and that when I did it, so I know it's making it to the server, and then the next thing is, do I actually get it out? Don't need some of this. Um, and just to see that, I'm gonna look at this here. I don't need most of these. Let's see if, so the goal is if I do a publish, if I run send that ball, I'm gonna see it here. Oh, there it is, great. All right, so now, and the thing is, if any of you navigate to uh, this observablehq.com bowing t ball shoot, um, you could also run this function, and this is just unauthenticated right now. Anybody can, can trigger these right now. Um, I can't tell if that means someone else just did it. Uh, but if I send it the other direction, negative 45, it should just move to the left. Let's see if that works. Okay, got stuck on the wall, but uh, let's send it at 10 degrees, kind of high. Whoop, there it goes, up and down. Um, I think I maybe noticed someone else um, sending. Great, so this is... I like where this is at. Now I can send these in. Anyone can look at this. The problem is that we're all sharing the same ball right now. Oh, that wasn't me. It was somebody else. Someone else is doing it. Great. So 
this is cool. Oh, and I see some nans. Oh, that was, I think those are my nans, because somewhere in here I'm doing a publish. OK, that's publish. Let's stop doing that every time the page loads. This is the one in the function definition for send that ball. And that's the only one, I think. Yeah, great. Cool. So look, make things happen on a stream. Great, we've, we've got to that spot. Um, but the next thing is it would be fun to, obviously, to make it a game, to make it golf, so you're, you're moving stuff around, to have persistent state where the ball stays where it was. So when you pub, you, you're still going to send in how you want to move the ball, but that'll be you know a movement based on where it was. And the other thing, what would be fun? Oh, it would be, you know, we should have multiple balls would be great. Just one would be fine, though, because we can all modify it. So I mean, that's not bad. And we won't have to change the rendering code. Um, Tress says they switched to yeah the VS Code and Vim plugin. I was talking to people at work. They they are also using that. That's what I, I know. That's what I need to do. Um, I you know, it's fine. Yeah, don't go back to it. Oh, okay. Tress is saying uh, looking at you, I wish to go back to Vim. Um, the Vim plugin still has quite a few limitations. For example, replacing between marks doesn't work. Huh. I mean that is the kind of stuff. Yeah, someone at work was saying today like is what you're doing really that fancy? You're probably going to be fine. Um, I don't do a lot of fancy stuff in Vim, I don't think, but then I do I use some plugins that are just keybinds, right? Stuff VS Code can do. It's just in a different key. Oh, well, that's not it. Not print. Um, I have my little like search in this repo kind of stuff. Um, things like, you know, I don't even use marks is the thing. Um, your text editor opinions are too controversial, but that means I, yeah, to share them. I want to hear. I'm interested. This is, this is. This is Friday after work. It's the time for it. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I imagine that would be fine. I'm just, you know, it's never the thing I want to do, you know? Um, yeah, I'll, re I'll, I'll read them out. I'll let, I'll let people know. Okay. So what was our next? Look, just to stay on task, I have to go back to this. Publish some interesting strokes. We're doing that now. What is the next thing? Yeah, we're, we've already done show everyone's golf strokes. They're just, they just happen to be all with the same ball. So I think I wanna, I wish the ball were in one. Yeah, let's stop, re, let's let's have a persistent ball uh, state. So every time you send in a new publish, a, a new stroke, the ball is gonna stay wherever it was. And that means we have to read data. And so I have to remember how to read data from these. It's not hard, um, claim. Something like, okay, DB table, great. So how's this gonna work? Right now, every single time we insert one into this row, instead what this is gonna do is find an existing row in this table. Maybe there'll just be one row in the table because it's just, excuse me, it's just one ball. Um, so it's gonna be table, strokes. It's not really strokes anymore. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna make a new table and call it, uh, so get strokes is looking for strokes. Instead, let's look, that's, and call balls, which is, well, it's, 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 it's better or worse, I'm not sure. Um, and let's try to remember how any of this works. Yeah, sure, take, let's, let's take one. Is there, I bet there's just a first, isn't there? Yeah, grab the only one. So the plan is there's only gonna be one item in here. Uh, right, I'm imagining a table now. A new table here called balls. There'll just be one in there. We are going to grab that one and modify it. So grab the first one. Hopefully that's something. Um, what is the type of this? If I say const foo never equals ball, what's the error I get? Uh, promise of any. Oh, it's a promise. So let's await it. Uh, what else? Any. Well, why is it any? Oh, because I don't have any types. I don't have a schema. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not with you. Sorry, I'm now off task talking about editor opinions because um, Supav says uh, VS Code's remote support is super cool. I agree with that. I, th I think the terminal emulators are a weird relic from before I was born. That Me too. I am not. I'm also not. Uh, I don't know what, how old we'd have to be for terminal emulators to not be a weird relic from before we were born, but it's, it's, it's up there. Um, yeah, but monofaint spot monofaint ah monospaced fonts are silly. I don't know if I can get on board with that. Uh, I have to think about it a bit. 
why am I so into it? Because I've I used Python and um, I guess that's why I got used to indentation as being thing important. But you could still have monospaced first parts or something. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, the re the remote support is super cool. Definitely. Um, I hadn't heard about um, JetBrains Fleet. Is that that's going to be their remote kind of tool or something? Hmm. Oh shoot! I have to chew on the monoface font fonts are silly. I feel like I have designer friends that would agree, but I. Wow. Okay, I have to think about that one. But first, back to this. You have a ball, we grab it. Um, we're gonna modify, what was the type? Oh, right, I was complaining about not having types here. And then I was thinking, gosh, why don't we have types? I w is there a VS Code? Okay, cool, cool. Um, I wish this knew what the type of that thing was gonna be, but I have never, I ha there's no data in the database with which to refer infer it because I don't have anything here, even if it was doing something really fancy. And, uh, a vote four. You like monospaced fonts? Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. There's two of us, but I, I, I don't. I don't. Okay. I'll, I'll ignore the fonts for now. Um, we have. We're getting the ball. I wish there were types on this. There aren't. Uh, I'm gonna make a little type here just so I can keep track of it. Um, but this is actually done for us. It's just a feature that I've never used before. So I'm gonna explore this feature um, in here. If you write a thing called schema somewhere, and there are instructions here about it, schema, let's make it smaller. Hmm, nothing here about it. I think it's in the docs. Convex.com or something, dot dev, I don't know. Something about schema. Sure, define schema. Defining a schema. A schema is a description of the tables you have. Okay, I'm planning, I have one table now. I don't care about that table. I'm planning to have a new table called balls. It's possible, I know, I was just doing it. Um, you can add a this and I'll give you additional type safety. I like additional type safety. Uh, writing one, that sounds good. And just stick it in convex schema.ts. That sounds good too. Convex schema.ts. Uh, let's define a schema, which is a table channels. Okay, I only need one table, so just keep this one. It's called balls. It has a no remote keys. It's just going to be simple things. This is going to have, I've got to remind myself how this is going to work. Looks like it's going to have a um, a TS, which is a number. Yes, which is a number, a um, an x, which is an s dot number, a y, which is an s dot number, a dx, which is an s dot number, and a s dot number. Uh, great. So I have a thing with five numbers in it. Good to know. Ooh, we have to decide how, when. Great, it's always good to have a have a good editor war going on in the comments because it's engagement. That's tasty, tasty engagement. Let's let's uh, let's good stuff. Um, I will actually read the content though. Don't fix what ain't broke. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing people like to say in arguments. Um, I'm I'm with you. What's missing in your current vetted sub? Oh, okay. Well, if we're Okay. Okay. Feel free. Feel free to discuss discuss the editor stuff. But I'm, I'm, for me, I don't like monospace fonts. Is sort of a deep, interesting thing that I'm chewing on, which is kind of fun. Um, the, if we get into like why do you like this, why do you like that, uh, we can do that. That's fine. But but just just, I'm very much like one version of don't fix what ain't broke is don't fix what ain't broke for you. If you have something that works, like. It is an investment. I was just whining about why I'm not using VS Code yet, and I would I'd like to because it's what other people on the team are using. I would like to help support their editor setup, but I, uh, yeah, yeah, just 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 keep it positive. I guess that's all. Uh, but the monospace thing is interesting. That feels like like future of code folks would have opinions on that. Um, okay. Anyway, let's let's make some progress here. So I just made a schema. 
Do I just get instantly get types? Do I have to do something? I bet I have to code gen or something. npx convex code gen. Maybe that'll do it. Writing a data model. Okay, that's new. Generated data model. Okay, looks like looks like some junk. But I had to code review at some point, but but still kind of junk. Uh, but it's very effective, awesome junk, because now in golf, I bet that now my type error is type, uh, well, it'd be nice if this was a little prettier, but it's saying that it can't be, a, it's a add property to object type of a timestamp, an X, a Y, a DX, and a DY, and it also has an ID, um, but that part's a little harder to read. But I am a chapter creator. And is it optional? Because first, sometimes might not be able to return anything. I don't see it being optional. I'm That's interesting to me. I feel like, uh, like if I said if, if ball, then do something, return true or something. Um, well, TypeScript's not telling me this will never happen. If ball equals 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 undefined. Okay, so I just don't understand this air, this note about this type and generic document. I would I I'm wondering why this maybe couldn't be null, but but that's great. I promise there'll be one in there, so it's fine. Um, oh, I'm gonna have to add one. Uh, so I'm gonna need to have a special function that only I'm allowed to call um, that uh, can stick that first ball in there. Uh, so, wait, that's not true. Publish stroke can just do this. So the first thing it's going to do is try to grab a ball. If if there's a ball there, if there's not a ball, then we need to add one. Uh, this is a common pattern in databases, right? You check, maybe it's not there. A nice thing is this is all going to happen in one mutation. Um, okay. If there's not a ball, then db.table db.insert, insert it into the balls table. This this autocompletion is making me happy. Great. Um, okay, insert into the balls, to, and then do I put the object? Yeah, the value, I put second. Great. Let's make one, and if I remember right, it was x, could be, you know, 50, y can be 50. This is just an initial, dx is zero, um, dy is zero. Ooh. My rendering layer has trouble with balls that don't move. No, it'll just fall down. It's going to be fine. Um, I was going to say, yeah, the very inefficient way I like project out the, the space. OK, I do want to read some of these comments a sec. Uh, TS can be, now why would it need a TS? Because it's just a ball. All right, so there's going to be a series. OK, 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 I'm, I'm forgetting my, my model here. There's a series of strokes. And when the stroke happens, um, Okay, forget the forget the ball stuff. We still need for my data model. We still need to be adding these strokes one at a time. Well, maybe not. The mutation could come in, and um, all right. So by, okay, now I'm distracted by comments. Do, 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 do. We're talking about stuff. Monospace. Yeah. Okay. I have I have some fun to do some self promotion for a moment. Um, uh, terminal whispering. I think it's called. Um, uh-oh, not a top hit. Yeah, um, this is not the version of it I like, though. Where is it? This is me trying to share cred, basically. Um, I'm with you, uh, Zubov, about the, um, yeah, the weird terminal stuff. And I was more with you seven years ago when I knew something about terminals in order to give this talk. Um, I don't no longer know so much about terminals, but uh, where they're talking about the history of terminals and a fun aspect of that is, um, where have we got it? Uh, oh, just some of these old, you know, right, these things, right? Um, not even these things. These are still terminal emulators. The actual terminals are these guys and teletype and telegraphs and all that stuff. Um, oh, you know, okay, okay, you know, yeah, yeah, great. Well, I'm just sharing it with everybody else now. Yeah, and I'm with you, um, Oh, that's okay. Cool, cool. 
That's great. That's how you discover the channel. Awesome. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm with you that terminals are are a relic and that we can do better. And some of the like the cool editor stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's always just just this inertia, right? Of this is what we've got. Um, this is a little bit the observable thing too. In my mind, observable was this better way to code, and that was pretty exciting. But then it was. I mean, it wasn't quite conservative enough. Anyway, I've over time, the last few years, I've like, I used to be really into like, let's reinvent everything, right? Let's let's um, that first golf thing was saying like, hey, if you create your own programming language, then you can build this cool environment where you can change, you know, where you could basically let's rebuild the world, right? Um, and. Yeah, yeah, you can build this cool environment where, oh, look, I can change the color of this background instantly. But uh, if I change uh, the way that the ball moves up here, then the code will rewind back to the beginning. And maybe this represents a new way to like build programming things. Um, and this was this is also about seven or eight years ago. And I was really excited about let's rebuild things. Um, and then I feel like since then, it's been a a gradual march toward like ah no to get if you want to make stuff that people will use often it needs to be more conservative it needs to be closer to what it is they they already want and so in my mind okay well, this was cool but observable is closer and and it still is i still i'm pretty excited about observable obviously i'm using it for this thing right now but um it's they were still hard to get people to move to it um a project I so desperately want to exist, um, but I'm too lazy to see through completion. I mean, yeah, yeah, too lazy, but like, yeah, it would be a big task, right? A GUI for the Unix shell, Chrome Dev Tools for Bash, yeah, and like Chrome Dev Tools feels like here is a thing a lot of people cared about, and therefore they made it. But probably people care about, you know, Bash too. All right, I'm, I'm. Anyway, I got stuck in thinking about the future a lot, and more recently, I've been trying to think about more like what are conservative way, what are ways we can take what we have and take a, a serious step forward. But you have to dress it up as something people are already familiar with, and that's the way. Now I get excited about this is how we're going to move things forward. It's going to be, um, here is a thing that looks like just a better version of the thing that you're used to, the standard, right? Like people wanted the faster. Uh, whatever the horse thing people talk about people wanted faster horses but you give them you give them cars and but maybe maybe at first you you like refer to it as a, a, a whatever for at first you still need to make it paint it like a horse or whatever um all right we have the schema then i remembered the thing that the data model here is that we have a, a list of these these um well i think we could just have balls i'm trying to decide if the current model here right is it gives you a stroke and it finds the current stroke, and then it it figures out how to um, you know it gets a list of all the strokes that had ever happened. It looks at their timestamps. I it right now is this renderer here. It looks at their timestamps, and then says, uh, "Let's make it work again. Send that ball. Great. The way like the data model here is what is it all." What was it called? All strokes or something? Remote strokes. This, it has a 20 objects here. This is every stroke that's ever happened. Um, but we've now seen that the round trip is fast enough that we don't need to keep every stroke that's ever happened. We could just keep the current stroke. And that's what I was gonna do in this new balls um, table. It's just gonna be, here is the position of a ball at this time. And so that we don't have to send like 60, updates a second or something, we're going to have its position at that time and its path. And then everybody's front end will render it out based on those times. Um, and we'll just, you know, imagine we have synced clocks, so it'll all work. Uh, so yeah, this does work. We can do a new, it's okay to do a new thing. Um, it's going to be the same. I'm going to go ahead and write my uh, generator that's going to grab these new values uh remote strokes where do we define this show it to me remote strokes is this great let's have a new thing called remote ball equals a query generator of convex and a function i've not written yet which is just going to be i think it can be the same thing um yeah i'm just going to modify I'll, I'll call it get get ball 
we'll write a new function. Great, this will be the remote ball, and what publishing a stroke does is just is going to change to remote ball, and it's, it's great, it's not balls anymore, it's just one ball, which is kind of cool. Um, this is blocked because, because why? Probably because it's just an error, this thing doesn't exist. Failed to process, oof, all kinds of errors. Couldn't find it, oh, because it keeps calling it over and over or something. Um, well, let's go fix this problem. We have published stroke, hopefully it works. Uh, if there's no ball, insert into the balls array uh, date dot now. Um, now that we've got it, uh, oh, we still need to get it out. Um, okay, we're going to insert it. Now we're going to pull it out. I guess I have to say let ball, and then down here say ball equals db dot uh, table balls first. It's a little funny to do this round trip thing. Like I'm inserting it and then I'm pulling it out. I'm I'm trading more. Uh... That's fine. That's fine. The, the, the code's more straightforward. Ball is first. Ooh, what is this saying? Um, I wanted ball to be of type. Uh... Do I have to define that type here? I'll just let it be whatever. Table balls first. So it's interesting to me that if I say, let ball be this, then I can't assign to it here. Uh, and I can't read this. Missing some properties. Um, missing all of them. Hmm. Table level. I mean, I think this should type check. I. It's the same code that was up here. Oh, it's because I have to wait. Yeah, TypeScript for the win. Told me to wait. Um, we get our ball. Now we have that ball and we want to update it. So db.up.table balls.up. Is that not a thing? How do I. I think it is db.update. Oh, it, I think it's not called update anymore. Table get patch. I want to patch, I guess, or replace. Replace sounds fine. Um, I need to know the ID of it. Okay. Uh, Ball.id. And this is the new ball that I want to. Okay, at this point I have I have the old ball, and I'm going to make a new ball, and I'm going to swap it out. And okay, this is where we have to decide what. To, yeah, thank you. Perfect. Trust. Yeah, exactly. We're going to wait. Um, I should look up the comments more. I'd, I'd code faster. So, uh, okay, what's the plan? Well. We have to decide if the ball's flying through the air. If it's stopped, that's fine. It's 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 um dx and dy should be zero. Although I don't know if I changed them to zero yet. Um, but what we have to decide is with while the ball is flying through the air, and then it receives a new mutation that sends it um, like it's it's it it hasn't reached the rest yet. It's still moving. Uh, when it gets to that spot. I know it's while it's still flying through the air. If we receive another mutation, should we imagine that you're like a golfer in the air that hit it from that location? It's it's just it's funny that the way I'm trying to do this is have all of us modify the same ball. Um, we're not really we're kind of playing soccer now. We're no longer playing golf where we're trying to hit it. You know, each have our own ball. There's one ball. We are trying to do things with it. Um, yeah, we could say you're imparting a force vector on it, and you're like it's in the air, and you're moving it somewhere or should we just because of the way we're yeah yeah i think that's fine i mean well some people will just spam the button to like impart a lot of force um and that's okay uh hmm yeah yeah sounds fine it's well it's gonna be funny because you can only hit it up with our rules it's still sort of golf um so yeah, what would be? Yeah, where should we try to get with this? Any ideas? Or what? What are the? I was saying it's golf, so we could leave it at golf, and in that case, we need everybody to have their own ball. And that would be really reasonable. We have a balls table already. Let's have everybody have one ball that you're allowed to move. You can do whatever you want with it, um, but. Yeah, you can hit it in midair if you want, but often people are not. You're going to wait for it to land and then decide what to do with it. Um, yeah, yeah. So 
the question I have here, the reason I was stuck, was deciding how we're going to modify the old ball. Are we going to apply force vectors to it, or are we going to just take those, uh, yeah, those those positions? I'm going to say let's hold on to the old position, whatever it was. Um, oh, but now this thing, the server. So <laughs> before the server didn't, all the server knew was where it was hit from and how it was moving. The server is going to have to run our simulation now. Um, yeah, tracking different players. I was thinking we could track different players based on, um, well, Convex will give us, hmm, that is a good question. I'm a, hmm, good question. So I think there's some, there's some notion of identity that Convex will give us, I assume. Yeah. I'm responding to Shreth's question of how we'll track you know who a different who different players are. I was hoping that each player, when you open observable, you've got in your notebook, you have one ball that you're. So when you open it, we'll create a ball for you. Um, maybe we save a secret. Yeah, maybe you when you create the ball, you send in a secret too that only you know or you, only your client knows. And if you don't send in that secret, you're not allowed to move that ball. Um, yeah, observable could. There might be like get user. There's like some kind of get user thing you're only allowed to use in like authenticated team notebooks but i i'd say let's just let's just use an identifier um oof, good pull over place let's let's do this ident identifier equals math dot random of um user plus math dot random everybody gets their own of these uh and that's the that's the string that you will use to. Okay, <laughs> I should I should cut out reasonable scope for us to uh, to do here. Yeah, let's say let's start with when you load the notebook, lo load observable. We're going to create a ball just for you, and that's going to add it to the balls table. Then you can send it mutations, the the publish stroke thing, and every time you do one of those, uh, it's. Yeah, you can you can change where it is. Um, things we're gonna need to do or do this ball stuff. We're gonna need to on the server. The server will have to be able to do math to figure out where the ball is. That's a thing it can't do yet. Right now, it just trusts the client. And now that I list all these things we have to do. It's gonna take too long. So let's 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 do the local thing that makes sense, which is what? Yeah, everything's everything's hard. Everything's gonna take some work. No, we can let's let's give everybody their own ball, and at least you can have your ball that's flying around along with everybody else's. Even if we don't get persistent state, um, we could at least see different people's arcs in different colors or something. Um, so, yeah, everybody is gonna get a identifier, and as we said before, that's user plus a math.random. and everyone's going to create a ball uh, convex dot mutation okay, we'll just call it directly dot mutation it's called create ball and what this does is it returns the uh, doesn't need to return anything because we could get convex to give you a secret but I'm thinking we'll just use the secret you've got here Create a ball. Please call the create ball function and call it with the arguments secret. Chain. Oh yeah, identifier. Um, and I don't think you need anything else. You should get to choose what color you want your ball. And is that a CSS thing? I think that's going to be something like f f e e d d. And if you wanted, you could change this code so that it would be a different thing. Um, now you could create a lot of balls by calling this a lot of times. Uh, and that's the part where it feels like we should be using a convex notion of user, but, but that's fine. Um, okay, as I'm, again, as I'm, I'm thinking about all the work we need to do here, like, could we, could we do this, say, in the next half hour or so, so I could wrap up? Um, I want to wrap up. This is fun. I can keep doing this. Uh, yeah, you're gonna call the create ball thing with an identifier, which is random, and a color, which is also random. And I don't want to figure out the code for a random color. So observable, give me a uh, random color. 
That sounds like the kind of thing a lot of, so if you're not familiar with the observable platform, there's a lot of visualization research that occurs on the platform. There's a lot of it's like, okay, random contrasting color. Great, create in random color for categorical. So a lot of times it's give me a random color that looks good with other colors. And that would be reasonable, but when you're one client, you don't know how many other colors are gonna be. Um, I bet D3 just has a, a thing, right? Random, math.random. Mm, okay, again, these are all for visualizations where you need things that are different. Um, random color blocks, this looks reasonable. This is our friend Andrew who's who's done some, con oh, oh my. Okay, as often happens, I think it would take me longer to understand someone else's abstraction than it would to just build it ourselves. So let's write a function called random color and well, we just, it's great, it's observable. We don't need a function. Um, just just write an expression. The expression I'm gonna use is, this is a template string that starts with this, and then it's just math.floor of math.random times 256. And it's just that several times. That needs to be a dollar. Cool, and then if I make a div and HTML, make a div where the style is background color ought to be put a space. This should be a double quote, I think. I know my HTML. Close thing slash Better put some content in to give it some size. What's the problem now? Style, it's misspelled, color, that looks good to me, and don't end the template string. Great. Every time I run this, no, every time I run this, we get a different, oops. Yeah, different colors each time, great. A lot of them are not very good. Um, it's very tempting to go write a better color function. Um, yeah, yeah, it would be a problem. Um, let's not make it nearly white or nearly black. How do we do that? All right, let's start. This is great. Thank you. It's exciting to have people with standards um, to to do this with. Um, yeah, so let's build a reasonable color. So const r equals. So I'm going to do the classic. I want a random thing with. Yeah, exactly. It should be an HSL with a random hue. That's exactly what we want. Um, gosh, what's the what's the the CSS index for that? Uh, HSL. Great, hue structure. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's let's do that. Um, and then in here, it's gonna be. I, I forget the. What what kinds of numbers are these? Oh, it's percents. Great, beautiful. This I bet this is good. Gosh, I'm not even sure. Okay, what's what's the first one? What's the second one? Saturation and lightness. Great, 100%, 50%. That gives us our most vibrant colors. Great. Uh, so our color, yeah, thank you. This is great. Um, It's zero to three sixty five or three sixty, right? Three sixty, I hope. Um, gosh, I've forgotten. I knew some of the stuff once. Cool. Great. Why are we not happy with this? Let's close the paren. Cool. Yeah. Look at the. Oh, it's always the same. Let's fix that. Math that random of three sixty. Um, how did this work? The color wheel says zero to three sixty. That looks good. It's just a number. Okay, let's let's print what it is we're building here. HSL of zero. It's always zero. That's not good because math.random works like this. Uh, great. Okay, beautiful. Look at these beautiful colors. I mean, a little bright. That's that's great. Um, so you now send in when you load this notebook. We're gonna call 
this secret is not defined. What's secret? Where did I say that? All right, so this is where we're complaining about create ball not being defined. And what we're going to do about that is go write a create ball. Export const create ball. I guess this is another thing where we could just do it. Uh, every time you modify it, we could also create it if it doesn't exist. And why, why would you do one instead of the other? Always creating it when it doesn't exist sounds better to me. Um, but this is what this is what we're doing now. So this comes with an identifier and a. Oh, okay. Um, when I was saying before, let's just have this be something you get from the server, uh, from Convex. Yeah, Convex is really good with coming up with things. It could give us an ID we could use. And if you know the ID, you're allowed to access this. But we've already got this secret thing wired up. Identifier um, and what else? Yeah, an identifier and a color. And oh, I forgot I'm using the uh, table dot, no, what is it? DB dot table balls. Okay, so this will create the ball, and then the other the the other things will just operate on them. Um, we can even use foreign keys to. Gosh, it's proper database stuff. Um, so we're gonna have balls, and in this table, let's add a. Uh, how does this work again? If I wanted to insert, I think it goes like this: insert into that table. Uh, I kind of want, if you are going to use the same secret, then I want it to be the same one. That's fine for now. Insert into the balls table. Um, the value is, gosh, this is just like this stuff again. So in addition to all this, you also now have a color which is a string, and you get an identifier. And what we're going to mostly use this for is that when you try to change a ball, it checks the identifier, and you're the only person allowed to modify that one. DB insert, great. Anything else to do here? Nope, you already know your identifier. Um, it's interesting I don't get a I was imagining I might get some kind of error here where it would say, oh, I probably have like some serious error. So publish stroke now comes with a, which one did you want to modify? Identifier, comma, angle, in degrees, mightiness. Um, that's string here. These are all strings. Hmm. No, they're not. Those are numbers. Also interesting that it's it's in is it inferring these? How does it know? Const foo never equals angle in degrees. Oh, it's an edit there any's. Okay, so let's let's identify them. I hope this one's a number. And I hope this one's a number. Mm. Cool. We're doing all this stuff so that. Yep. I don't really need to do that until afterwards. Grab the ball. Uh, Um, oh, it's not first anymore. It's now, ooh, we get to write a query. Uh, I want to do, I'm just going to get everything. <laughs> that's that's my favorite kind of query. Balls and then const ball equals, uh, hopefully there's one. The one where 
balls.filter is uh, called b, where b.identifier is equal to the identifier that you sent in. And if you don't have one, can't find that ball, can't find it. And then go ahead and do this modification stuff and replace the that previously existing ball with a new ball <laughs> okay and this is back to our are we going to have strokes and balls or is it going to be balls with identifiers and colors and then somewhere else we'll say the strokes that have been applied to them and I think we just want to go full balls and the way you modify a ball is you say grab the right ball make it change in what way make it um, yeah impart that new impulse or whatever to it make it make it be going in a different way and then we will eventually need to uh, make that ball yeah we'll need to make it move um, db.replace the only things we're going to change are that dx and that dy oops come on prettier right it's not working because I because this stuff doesn't work here Right. I was hoping prettier would do something like this. I was happy with that too. Uh, so we give it a new dx and dy, and a new timestamp at which that dx and dy. Okay. This is where we need the simulation code because at this point we need to give it a new you know const dx dy equals what where is it actually at this time um, but as our intermediate thing for now we will just have it snap back to the spot at what it started at and it will fly with this new velocity um, so we don't yeah we'll give it a new timestamp too Great. So now if you were to create a ball, well, after we push, NVX, convex, push, I should make that a hotkey. Yeah, so now if we had a create ball, which we do here, but a lot of errors. Um, yep, I did push it. And I'm back here, and I wish I could see. Let's, let's call this something to do with about, something about golf. How do I name it? Okay, there's a thing called create ball. Uh, does it work? That's the first question. Well, we can look at our data and see. Oh, doesn't seem to work because we don't have any balls yet. So let's look at some logs and see. Gold get ball. Oh, gold. Sorry, this is what you said so long ago. Yeah, gold's not not or golf not gold. So where did we say gold? Probably back here. If I just trusted my chat, I, I just didn't know what we were talking about. Uh, golf. Golf. That's for getting a ball. What is... Um, get ball doesn't exist yet, though. Gold. Anywhere else? Um, oh, and here, this needs to be golf colon create ball. 
And that could work now. Okay, this one hasn't returned yet. Maybe just because it doesn't... Where's, where's my loop to stop it running? Ah, uh, that's not going to help. Um, couldn't find get ball. Okay, stop trying to find get ball then. But now, couldn't find get ball. Where are we looking for get ball? Oh, because that doesn't exist. Fine. That's okay. Can't find that ball. Great. That's working. Publish stroke. The way that publish stroke now works is that we publish with um, our identifier, identifier. Great, okay. And now we're just about errorless. Cool. You can hear the car alarms. It's just it's a good it's a good day in the mission. Um, it's a Friday night. Everyone's everyone's having a good time. The mariachi music will come on in a little bit, but I, I think my mic's adjusted such you won't hear it. We'll see. I hope you do. It's good stuff. It's not this is not canned mariachi music that, that gets a takedown notice. This is this is the real thing. Well, I don't know if it's the real thing, but it's 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 being played on guitars. It does sound like a party? Great, good, good. I guess because we're having a party here. I can turn can I turn my gain up? So you can hear even more of the party? I don't know which way's up. This way's up. Great, great. Because it is a party. Mm, I'm going to set an arbitrary goal of having something working in, in 16 minutes. Um, okay, we've got our colors. Do we do we send in our color? Yes, we do. Great. Let's look at our data. How are we doing? Uh, we have balls. I've made a bunch of them. Uh, some of them have some DXs and DYs, and some don't. Uh, hmm. Does that suggest that I've modified some of these? So, kinda, oof. I'm going to need to make a hotkey to quickly clear these tables. <laughs> I'm going to just do that right now. Uh, let's get our selector. It's probably the only BG pink 100 on the page, hopefully. Query selector, right? Query selector. What is it? Document.query selector. This thing. Hopefully there is just one. You can't find it. Oh, and we need a dot. Hopefully there aren't too many. There are two. Uh-oh. Um, how do I uniquely identify this one? It's inside of... Uh, a text SM, is that going to help? Nope, there's still is that that's just one. Great. Query selector of that dot uh, inner text suite. Um, does anyone know how to stick this in the copy buffer? Uh, that's fine. I can just copy and paste from there. Great. Copy. Pay. Oh, you know, you know the right. What I should be doing is turning off the no user select on this. Uh, select none. Yeah, let's just turn off select none. So we've got that thing. Dot style dot select dot user select equals, gosh, what's the right value? CSS user select value. None text all. Let's make it text. Yeah, sweet. Okay. Now I can do this more often. Now I'm going to have to do this every time. Oh. I'm going to have to do this every time, so I'm going to have this just be a function that runs every, like, uh, I don't know, function do it is this. Let's set timeout, uh, set interval to do it every. I don't know. Once a second. That sounds fine. 
Now if I come over here and I click my clear button, which is just out of view, oh, it doesn't work. Why not? Because do it's not defined because I didn't capitalize it right. Sweet. Okay. Now all that was because I'd like to see what happens when I load the page just once. What did we get? All right. We have a... Uh, a color, okay, which is a string. We have a DX, we have a DUI, we have our identifier, which is user something. We have a timestamp, an X and a Y, great. And I'm hoping that there's a way to modify the DX and the DY here. So in here, in my publish, when we do a publish, Well, I, I, I announced it and it, it appeared. You can hear some some guitar now I'm singing. Um, you could publish. Yeah, every time we call, send that ball. If I change this, make it two, you know, 10. Wait, what were the two numbers? <laughs> Angle and degrees, 45 degrees and mightiness, which the max value is 20. All right, so I should see two numbers that are the same. So right now I have numbers that are different. And if I call this, I will now have numbers that are the same. Great, so this is working. Um, so now I would like to make our renderer query that balls table instead. And let's see, renderer. Right now it's using state. There's a hotkey and observable for like traversing the, the reactive tree. And I don't know what it is. Oh, but if you hover, it tells you what it is. What is it? Come back. Jump to defining cell, control J. Sweet, control J. Oops, control J, there we go. It's this stuff, okay. And in here it's looking at remote strokes. What if this instead looked at um, Remote balls, I think. The way that cur stroke works is that it it looks through all looks through a list of things and finds any of them that have a timestamp in the past and runs them. Oh, I'm starting to fade out. Some stream suggestions. Right now I have to manually adjust the aperture of my camera to, to appear more. But there are fancier ways to do that. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is, we don't even need cur stroke anymore. It's always the right stroke. Um, we're just gonna grab our ball. So S is now just um, remote ball or balls. How do we find our ball? I have a query generator here for, okay, remote strokes, but I need one for, okay, remote ball. Is that a thing yet? Oh, get ball doesn't exist. Yeah, so that's what a get ball was supposed to do. Um, let's write a get ball. Yeah, we hadn't written it yet. It's gonna be a query like, like what, like, like get strokes, it's it's exactly this code. Not quite exactly. Dot. You send in your identifier. Well, the goal is that we want to see all of them. So I'm going to make it get balls, and and you get to see everyone's ball. Get balls. Bring back all of them. Cleverly, I'm not going to give you all the information because if you had the other identifiers, you could just use those. We don't want that. So you get balls here. Um, this is the point at which I'm wishing I had, uh, you know, a type here. Const foo never equals all strokes, and it says, yeah, that's fine. It's just any. Oh no, we do so something about balls. But I think I never. I didn't think I defined it in the schema. There's nothing about ball. Oh, there is. There is. Balls is the one that has something. Okay. Um, 
So I almost want to return this, but what I really want is the return to return the map of balls dot map b goes to um, I'll write out a little e easier with multiple lines. B goes to uh, const let's rest out the thing I don't want to return is the identifier um, destructuring const this stuff equals that ball oh just that that can be B return rest Collect, await, all right, now we might have a thing called get gut balls plural at least, push, remote balls plural, every time we reload this page we should get another one because it's another user, great. And so it gives us all of our balls and the, oh, there's four now, okay. Oh yeah, that makes sense, so we're three. Anytime anyone reloads this page, we'll get another one. And our goal is to render all of those. Uh, yeah, right? You know, when we created a first one, we should probably, let's back in here so that we can see them in different spots. Let's start them at random spots. Uh, let's do 10 plus math.random times 200. That works well for a Y as well. Great. Because now I need to write a render for four of them. I'd like to be able to see them. And let's clear so they're all going to be randomly. Yes, it's great when you write a tool and it saves you more time. Also, like maybe you should give the product feedback that like it's kind of nice to, to clear your tables um, when you're just experimenting like this. Maybe there can be like a debug mode where you're where you're clearing tables a lot. get these balls. Okay, it's an array of nothing at the moment, but if I create one with create ball, now there's one in there, great. Um, I would like my renderer to show every ball and its location. Uh, the way that, so now this thing needs to be a loop uh, over the balls. So if you have those, oops, remote balls, um, let's render every single one. So I have to write a little loop in here. Uh, Oh, neat, okay, we see all of them. Let's make another one. Send, nope, we're not moving balls yet, we're just building them. Uh, publish, publish a golf stroke. No, not a stroke, a, a new ball. So every time we reload this page, we should see another one. Cool, they're all blue, which is a little disappointing uh, because I'm not rendering them with the color. Let's style. Where is it? Class ball. Um, oh, right now I'm styling it with some, some what do you call it? The, the normal thing, some CSS, a style sheet. Let's stop doing that. It can still be class ball, but we'll include in here. Background color is going to be whatever the B dot color is. Nice. Great. So we've got our circus juggling. 
Um, okay, now the thing we'd really like to do is that you, anyone can send in a, a stroke and that plays, but there's the renderer logic for this is, is a little funny. Um, so we've got these balls. Now, one of the things we could do would be you publish updates to the server and it, it actually makes those updates. And what you stream down is positions that that is in. Maybe 10 times a second we could update the position, but that's not enough. Um, a client, if it knows where the ball started, can have a smooth 60 frames per second animation of where it's going. And that's what this other code does. That's what state was supposed to be doing. Um, it was supposed to be looking at, so yeah, state. Now I guess the goal will be to come up with something that looks like balls, but is, or yeah, it has the same shape of data as that balls does, but it's going to be uh, the, you know, forward in time version of those. So I guess we'll still do, I mean, we have enough information in here for this, right? Uh, a ball has a time at which that started. And so what we're gonna do for any ball is look at the time for it, play a simulation out to see where, if it was at that spot at that time, where it would be now by looking at the delta of time. And we have a little function that does that already. It's called stroke now. And we're gonna have to change it a bit because this is not a stroke anymore. It's now a ball. And because we're pair programming here, because I know there are people out there, I am thinking harder and remembering that there's a find and replace, which is great. Uh, but I don't remember what it was. Command shift F, yeah. Stroke, not everywhere, just in that one cell. Just here in this cell, can I limit this to the cell somehow? Mm. Okay, at this point it would take longer to figure it out, so I'm just gonna do it. Ball. See, I can't complain about, you know, if I'm happy to use this editor. Again, that, there's gotta be some way to do it. But if I'm happy to use this editor, then I can't complain about them VS versus VS code because I am more proficient at those. Uh, so stroke now looks at ball information and says, this is where it was, where should it be now by repeatedly playing this step function. And it's sort of an inefficient, not sort of, it's quite an inefficient way to do a renderer when like to render state when every frame of this animation, we need to say like play the animation back from that initial point, but it's fine. Computers are real fast. Uh, so got this step function that winds it forward until you get to yeah step just runs once the way that this stroke now thing does is it takes a ball and it gives you the new position of that ball and it does that by checking the time now looking at the timestamp if if the timestamp of the ball is in the future you just return it if it is up to a hundred um steps in the future in the past then just play this thing out to find out where it ought to be that should just work. Uh, so we just want the map of that. So remote balls, let's have current balls here. Current balls equals remote balls dot map the uh, stroke now over it. Let's call this the current positions. Okay, so we've got these things here. And ideally, when we make a new one that has some DX, or just, okay, send that ball probably no longer works because it doesn't know how to talk about our specific ball, but all we need to do is hook that up. But we could we could play with it first by make, making a new ball. Let's move this down. We should, we should make a button for some of these. I'm used to just, you know, shift entering. That works great, but okay, great. Uh, it didn't move my, oh, okay, interesting. It's not updating its position until, ooh, yeah. So if I call it a lot, I can see the balls falling, um, but it's not updating because there's some loop that's supposed to be going forever. And where is it? Here it is, while running. All right, so 
it's not okay this this is fine current balls i need to be updating current balls all the time current balls equals this generator that while running is going to take um This is the thing that advances it. Um, this is the thing that once every animation frame, we will yield state. And what, what is state? It is the, where's our map? It is that map here. Oops, come back. Yeah, this map. Current balls is going to be for each uh, I hope that wasn't important. Um, get the new positions of all of these things. Yield that. You just yield it directly. Yield this. And then wait an animation frame. Um, Okay, this is updating, and if I make a new one now, yeah, it works, sweet. So these things, <laughs> all right, that's great. I'm gonna slow down the animation to make it more obvious. Um, also, we're probably burning up CPU, like, but uh, that's fine. Uh, we don't need this. Physics, yeah, yeah, a wee bit of physics. Um, Slow it down so it looks cooler. That's one of the rules. So let's make gravity a little bit less strong. 0.05 or something. Great. And where was it? Oh yeah, make some more. Great, they fall slower, that's good. But now everyone, oh, and they're, they're still blue. What happened to that? Oh, every time I'm creating one, is that because my color is blue? I don't think so. What happened to our... Uh, Ooh, someone, someone shot one! You shot one, that's great! Uh, but what, what's going on? Um, where's this blue coming from? I wonder if it has a color and it's, it's not syntactically correct. That's the kind of thing that would happen to me. If I click on this circle here, all these little circles, it says dir, wait, what's, what is it? Okay, this is the thing that keeps changing. It's changing too fast. I guess that's why I made there be a running flag. Uh, running while, just make this false. Okay, stop running. Oh, I see, no, that's fine. You can do that, just, just set running to false. Um, nope, it's still running. Anyway, I wanted to look in there and see what these, uh, oof, it's gonna be hard to get in there. Um, if this wasn't HTML, what would this look like? Element, oh, if this also wasn't HTML. Each ball has a style, which is left something, bottom something, background color, undefined. Okay, that's the problem. And why is background color undefined? Let's look at those, let's look at the map. Probably because this thing doesn't propagate the color through. Great. Now they're all red. That doesn't feel like an improvement. Oh, it's because it's the reactive color color. I want the balls color. Uh, state dot color. Oh, I see. Here, I, have, I want the local variable color. So I'll color there. Great, there we go. Okay. Oh, it's probably all red because all I was making all red balls, right? Does that color stuff happen? Okay, it's a random color decided on the client. Uh, and so it's only every time that I run this that it changes. Okay, uh, I'm feeling good about this. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling real good about our hack here. Uh, when we first load, we create a ball. It's flying, look at it go, yay! Now, that's my ball. I own that ball, and I should be allowed to change its position. And where's our, like, send that ball. Great. 
So send that ball. Send, oh no, it's, it's called publish or something. Publish, publish the stroke. Right now it takes no information, publish stroke. I would like it to take some, no, it takes an identifier and no, so that should work. We just need to change the way we call it. Send that ball, publish, um, an identifier. That looks good. Does this just work? Maybe we're done. Maybe we did it. Uh, let's find out. Okay. So we're not preserving the position, but we can do it. Now, if someone else, if I republish here, if someone else were to come in here and do it, or if I did it another tab, that one goes two. It has a different color, and it can also send balls on these same path. Great. Now, okay, that might be where I wrap up because that's that's of of the velocity of development. Um, that's that was a little, you know, a little flash of it going really well. Um, I'll we'll wrap up. So, what was the point? I mean, the point was like try to do some gamey stuff because I've not done that in a long time, and that went okay. Um, thank you for the help on the physics here. Uh, I already had, I'd already written the gravity thing because I was most worried about that. I did that like during, you know, stuck it in at work. Um, yeah, what else does it do? Nice. I, someone else has thrown a ball. Terrific. And, but obviously the next thing we need, right, is that when you send a, like, that, that state needs to be persistent. Um, it's ridiculous that that state's not persistent. Uh, so... Man, I'm gonna peek at that. Let's 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 look at that just a little bit. Uh, how would that work? So, when we send this out, the problem is that the server out here, server has no idea. All it knows about these is that they were once at this x and y, and this is the time at which they were at that x and y, and here is their trajectory starting at that time. And now what we need to do is when you send that next, um, yeah, when you publish that new hit, we need to say, what time is it now? What is the position for that thing at this new time? And based on that, uh, you know, update this position in that time. So we have to take some of this code. And this is the normal thing I do with observable a lot, which is I've written this wacky, mostly JavaScript, but also kind of reactive JavaScript. And now we need to move it into normal, you know, good old normal code. So that is going to be, I need our step function. And this is also the point at which we want this code to stay in sync. Otherwise, it'll look different on the server and the client. So <laughs> I'm going to write a little note. Don't, don't change this. It needs to match server. Copy it. And obviously, this is the point at which you'd start sharing some code. If I was doing some normal development here, let's put it at the bottom. I like using one file as a function called step. Ooh, we have some x min and y. Okay, these things too. Const x min x min. How do I set two? Is there what syntax we're setting two of these variables at the same time? X min equals con. Uh, that's fine. Zero. I guess it's const x. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Const x min y x max y min y max equals um, zero, zero. I think it was 500, 1000. Great. Now this code will work. This code also needs to stay in sync between these two. And what now? Step state. Who knows what state is? Uh, state is a. Oh, okay. This is this interesting type stuff where we've inferred. I've got a type in here. Um, I'd like to make a derived. I, I want to. I want that type. Uh, I would like to use it. Also, this is wrong now, right? There's supposed to be an identifier in here. and something else like a 
color. Um, I don't know, maybe that's going to help out my completion here. Um, so I would like this state to be that kind of thing, but I don't know how to get it that type. Uh, maybe I import it from, there's this thing called a data model. And if I look at balls on that data model, type ball equals data model of balls. Uh, const foo never equals um, zero as a as unknown as a ball. What is the type of this thing? Um, it's a document. I can't. It's kind of hard to read this type, um, but if I try to say const ball equals, and then I try to stick something in there, and it's something with an x, hmm. Not assignable, why? Object literal x does not exist. x doesn't exist, oh, I thought it did. Okay, I found the wrong thing. How do I get this? Yeah, anyway, I don't, I don't quite understand. Data model. Yeah, I'm not sure how to get in there and get the type. So this is a thing I can ask about on Monday, but I can just make my own types for now. Type ball is still number. DXDY, uh, I forget what else. There's a timestamp. I think there's a, there's a color we're not going to care about. And there's a, what was it? A um, identifier. I don't really care about these. Mm, but now I can say, yeah, this thing is a ball. And DT is how far into the future you want to go. I think. Yeah, it's how far in the future you want to go. Step just takes us one step in, and we're going to need to do a lot of steps. And I have some code that calls step current positions. The current position of a given ball is, and this is a little funny because time works sort of differently in convex unless it's happening in a mutation. And I think, so it's just important that we call this from mutation, call from a mutation. Oh, but it's not gonna be from a mutation. Well, yeah, it can be a mutation um, because it's when we're applying a new stroke to it that we need to do this. Again, I'm now just hoping the clocks are synced between convex and, and and clients, which is not a great plan, but it's gonna work fine for us. Current position, take that ball, which is a ball, and get the current time. Um, I think we have high resolution on that. Uh, if you're trying to get the current position and the, the current state of the, it's, it's a future thing, just return it, great. Otherwise, go up to a thousand steps into the future, trying to, uh, Hmm, I wonder why it's not. Uh... Sorry, pretty classic. Checking the text message on the stream. Hmm, it's my roommate telling me there's some pork chop for me sometime, which is a pretty exciting text to get. Um, why doesn't this work? Type ball. Oh, because this isn't typed. Let's type it. Oh, because I'm not passing these through? Yeah. Good thing I'm uh, 
the way I'm going to just take get everything here is say state ball and overwrite these properties. There we go. Whatever it gives, it must be return. Just so I don't forget those properties again. Um, the current position of something, step through. The way step works is that it just returns the exact same ball object if uh, the ball has hit one of the borders and so is not moving anymore. Mm -hmm. Great. And if it's if we've made it into the now, then do it. Great. Okay. Current position. All right. So. The way that we'll need to debug some, I've written more than a few lines of code, so we'll have to do some console logs to check. But if this works, uh, in our publish stroke, the x and y, our to do x and y, the way we're going to get these is with um, the const dx const dx dy is going to equal the current position of the ball at time. No, just just now. The current position, right? Uh, not happy. Can't. Def okay. Suppose we need new names for them. Um, oh, and it's it, it's the x and y anyway that I want. X and y. Great. And that's ball, but override the x and the y as well. Cool. So so this could work. If it worked, I'd just stop on a high note. This would be great, but it's not going to work because that's not how. Um, not because I'm bad, just because that's how that's how that's my model for how programming works. Uh, you write a few lines of code, and it's, it's probably not going to work. Uh, so I'm going to need to push this. I really should set up a hotkey. This is this is great to finally do some of this basic stuff that. Uh, yeah, it seems like you want to figure out. X convex push. Okay, back over here. Let's try to. Uh... All right, the reason I do need to refresh here is that my mutation. No, my mutation objects are fine. They call live code. It's all fine. Um, so now I'm hoping that whenever I make a new ball with this, it's going to appear here, fall down to the floor. And then if I were to do uh, send that ball, let's move this is this above or below let's move this down here when I call this ooh uh, looks like a different ball um, what if I do it again nope it snaps back okay so let's find where let's, let's dive into that send that ball all it's doing is calling it with our identifier the way that works in here send oh is publish stroke we can have console logs in this sort of code which is nice um, it says grab all the balls find the right one uh, before Before, right? Is this that is some weird syntax highlighting. What is going on? What happened? Does not like that colon. That's pretty funny. Um, I'm, I'm suspicious. There's something. Oh no, that's okay. Why is what's wrong with my syntax that, that TypeScript? Huh. All right. There's, there's clearly a syntax error somewhere because that's why I can't. Um. 
and the ball after is this. Okay. I because my syntax highlighting is screwed up. I'm. It's time to do it. Code convex golf. That's right. Trust all of this. Golf. All right, this index highlighting is fine. Gotta give it the VS Code. All right, um, I'm now gonna run this and look at our logs. I do have to push this first, whoops. How do you run things in a, I feel like I wanna go away all the way if I'm in VS Code, but I, I won't, I'll keep running things from the terminal. Make sure the push is working. Yeah, it's fine. And now, if I hop over here, I should get to see some logs at some point. Hmm. Okay, let's do a send that ball. Oh, okay, I get the logs here, right, I forgot. This is a great spot for them. Um, before we had a dx and a dy after we had the same dx and the dy probably because i hmm that's a little su suspect and the same all right does not look like this modified them at all um so when i create a ball it drops to the floor here when i send it, it seems to have gone back to where it was. And then when I send it again, um, also why is sending it not? Okay, it's giving me notes. Uh, so let's let's make those logs better. Um, Okay, and then ball position before is ball x ball dot y, right? And then ball position after is ball dot x. Oh, whoops. New ball dot x, new ball dot y. Hopefully we're also updating the time. Yeah, we are updating this timestamp. Uh, what else is there? because maybe I'll use these. So let's go ahead and do some easier because we're cheating uh, clearing. If I update this and send it less hard hops back to the previous spot but the new things are taking if I look at my logs um, the new DX and DY clearly works because we saw it work there but also that look, looks good here um, but the before and after is always the same here so this thing about our simulation is is not working there so it's probably time to I mean I'd say it's time to write some unit tests right it's time to we have finicky stuff with numbers. It's trying to see if this code works in another context. Another way we can do that, though, is let's see, current position, um, the current position of the ball. We get the current time. I'm not going to learn much by just staring at this, right? Um, we check to see if the timestamp is in the future. Um, if it's before, then just then just don't touch it. That could be the case. Uh, we'll 
find out if that's the case. This is great. I'm starting to think about, oh yeah, it would be fun to have a debugger or something. Um, then let's start stepping. Console.log step. So we'll see how many times that prints. Are we doing thousands of these? Or are we just doing like one? Let's make, let's do less total steps so that we don't print this way too many times. Uh, and yeah, each time we're gonna say, hey, let's let's step. Yeah, that's that's enough hypotheses to check. And then once we get into here. We look at the color and we don't use it. Yeah, sure. Uh, we are we calling step with a DT step. Uh, yeah, with a, with a small amount of DT. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Who are you now? Sure, start over for, for clean everything. Okay, there it went, there they go. Uh, I don't know what's happening, maybe that was somebody else, maybe it was me. If I try to send this one, that one disappears, comes back here. Okay, each time I do that, it's coming back here. Um, I don't see any of my steps. It doesn't look that I, that I... This is great, already getting information. Um, when Send that ball runs. There's no, oh, there's one step, a single step. Uh, which is which is real information. Um, and here, the step. We say step, we increase this, we look at the rig, um, we call step on the ball, there's Original equals ball. We can find out which of the end conditions we're hitting. Step says, uh, what does it mean when you turn the same one? I think it means that, it means out of bounds. Step says ball is out of bounds. And then otherwise, if the ball Wow, some of you are champs for hanging in. This is great. Uh, I feel like you're, you're waiting to see it through with me. And I don't know if we're going to see it because I'm starting to get hungry for for whatever tasty thing that was. Some pork chop or something? Um, but we've got a shot. Every time we open, we see that move there. And then when I say clear our errors here, when I say send that ball, we go back to there. Um, it's got a new DX and a DY because that works. We the ball position before we did this was these things. We do a step, and then the step says the ball's out of bounds. Okay, um, maybe it's starting out of bounds. Maybe oh, it's out of bounds because it's down here. Sure, right. It's always going to be out of bounds if it's starting. No, but it was started over here. That's how that works. Well, I wonder how it's out of bounds. This is the kind of thing where I could have screwed this up. X min X max. Yep, this is exactly what I screwed up. X min x max so this should be 0 1000 y min is 0 
Y max is 1,000. Nope, I think Y axis is 500. Great. Let's see if that helps. Bet it will. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to be using VS Code. <laughs> Just not natural. So if you send a ball now, oh, it goes from the spot. It does it. <laughs> it appears that this is that we get the classic frog behavior. Well, I say that because it's green. But for me, this is jumping on my screen because of that latency. Oh, it's getting real dark. Um, this is what we were like trying to. Um, yeah, OK. I, I would say we've got it, though. Right, so publish. You want to play with it? The, the gist is any one of us can control our own ball. Right now, I'm the green one. And I can hop around. Let's hop back over here. And now let's hop again. It does seem like we're going back a little, doesn't it? Oh, someone else is hopping. Hop, hop. Um, once you get out of bounds on the right-hand side, can you ever get back? That's the next question. Yeah, it seems like. I think you're allowed to get back. Uh, hmm. There's some buggy pieces here. It looks like Y is not getting reset because I keep starting at the like way high up. Uh, <laughs> 45. Okay, there's there's some issues. One of which being that every time does that happen with other people? If I start again, let's get another color here. Oh, there's a there's a little purple hop. Um, I'm gonna take a little purple hop too. Great, and try to hop back. And that's, I think, fine. Am I starting higher each time? I think I'm starting higher each time. Well, it's just hard to tell. Anyway, so something about Y position seems funky. Maybe I'm just going to see it. Something about the way that we, when we're stepping, X, Y. No, I'm not going to see it. Who am I kidding? There's, it's, it's, it's a tricky thing. Um, okay, but <laughs> we should call it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not golf. It's, it's multiplayer little, little frog hopper. Yeah. So, so some, the information I would like for debugging is, uh, what are these, like that initial position that it's using? Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. Um, it's this number. Change that. Take out this. We're good. Push. So in order to avoid getting thousands of those little, st we're only simulating the physics for a few steps on the server, but we simulate it for a lot of steps on the client. So if it's only enough steps to go a little bit up, then that's what's going on. Um, now, if you do something like this, uh, great, okay. Now go the other way. Oh, come on. Now we're all stuck on that right wall. I, I think I, there's no way to get off the walls. <laughs> Maybe there is. Um, hmm. Okay, I don't see any change. I was sure excited about that being it, but I don't think so. Zero. So now each time we're all getting stuck on that wall. Uh, 30. I can move that way. I don't even see it now. I think my, are my, um, I can't count, tell if they're being rejected. Okay, well, if rewind is to when, when I thought maybe it was working, then maybe it was working, which is great. Okay, so piece of the debug. <laughs> uh, the big thing I realized was that we, it's interesting that, that we can get close enough just, I thought we needed to do the delay. I was excited about that delay before, and let's wait. And we could still do that. We could put these mutations in the future a little bit um, so that they everyone would get to see the whole thing. But it's interesting we don't need much of that. Um, okay, every time I load, I get another one of those. If I call send. All right, I think I'm, are we getting errors on those? Or was it just a big delay? So I want to bring back my 
why did I lose my paste buffer? It's confusing. Um, console.log step. I'm wondering how many times this is running. I guess the right way to do that is to, at the bottom, or whenever you would return, console.log steps is uh, I. Steps as I. Let's pop back here. What is what's our data look like now? We have a lot of these, a lot of the oh no, no strokes, because we don't need strokes. Um sure, let's clear that. Feel clean. Let's look here at about a clear console. Um when I do ascend, I move it forward. Steps five. I wonder why it only took five steps. Ball out of down after 150 steps. That sounds reasonable. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm back into the unknown, but I'm going to hold on to that certainty I had a moment ago, which was fun. Um, and now that we know we don't need to delay, think about this a little bit. Um, say we're going to keep going, which I'm not going to do. If we're going to keep going, pieces I'm curious about are, okay, show us everyone's golf strokes. Check! I want to give us 100%, even though we don't deserve 100% for this last bit. Um, what would we want to do next? I guess we'd want to... have t terrain so we need to teach so at this point i probably want to make a class where i can debug the stuff locally and then stick the physics engine into the cloud into convex um we could have terrain win states um we could have so again back to the basic stuff that we had in in the mini golf where wouldn't it be fun to uh have uh rounds or something um, but the, the, the real thing we need next is why, why not working? Uh, but we've seen pieces work, so it's, it's all doable. It is now some, you know, the kind of thing that it's hard for me to do on stream, which is deeply understand all the pieces. Uh, send that ball. Yeah, right, because we just get nothing here. Okay, there it is, and now I want to send it at a... 45 degree with some power. Um, yeah, just nothing. I'd like to know if maybe, all right, I'm gonna cheat and use some in internal knowledge here. Maybe it's some kind of error. Uh, let's look at our network here. Let's look at this, the sync WebSocket. Let's see what it's saying. Is it telling us that something failed uh, in the messages? Some of these. What's it got to say? Some of the more recent ones. Time goes down, right? How does time work? Time goes down, gets bigger as you go down the page, yeah. Um, query updated. What are we querying? Updating with, hmm, looks fine. How about some of these mutation responses? Are these failing? Get some log lines. Result, success is true, great. So these are working. Um, so the next thing I'd wanna do is try to do one of these sends and look at that data at the same time, see how that data is changing. Uh, yeah, because so it was just working. Right. Okay, thanks so much. So many people hung in there, I really appreciate it. Uh, that's that's great, it was fun to, I don't know, I've wanted to pretend to be a streamer for a bit, so it's fun to try that. Um, and it's fun to find out I can, for the most part, we can write some code together. Um, I'd like to do some content that's content, talking about content. It'd be fun to do some content um, that is actually under deeply understanding things and teaching it, more similar to conference talks that are more the kind of stuff I've done before. Um, but also this is just kind of fun. So might do some of this. Um, hard to figure out if it's a thing you prep for or if it's a thing that you chill 
with. Uh, but yeah, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, I've got a little end stream button. I guess I click that.